try this, please. I need you to share with me in the comment section. We're all very aware of the need to have good vaginal health. And many products and treatments are suggesting that this is precisely what they deliver. But did you know, according to studies, women with vulval use of bubble bath were twice as likely to have bacterial vaginosis than women who did not use this product. And bacterial vaginosis BV was three times more common in women using antiseptic solutions on the vulva or in the vagina and six times more common in women using a douching agent. This is just one example of what some vaginal healthy products can lead to. So in this video, let's explore some weird conventional and unconventional vaginal treatments that have gained attention in recent years. We will explore them according to different categories for each one. What are they? Do they have any medical benefits? Can they cause harm and what are their risks of doing so? Hi, I'm Dr. Sylvia, a consultant in general practice. Welcome or welcome back to Ask Away Health, where we talk about women's health conditions in a way that will help you make smart decisions about your own health. Please give this video a like and do consider subscribing to the channel. It will be great for you to join our health family. Also, please head over and join me on TikTok. I've recently opened my page and I'm trying to get to my first thousand followers. I would appreciate having you over there as well. But before we start, if you're not familiar with the different parts of the female genital area, then please make sure you download and have a look at my free Know Your Lady Bits graphic guide to help you understand the different parts of the vulva, the pubic area and so on. So let's begin with one that you're probably already familiar with, vaginal steaming, also known as yoni steaming. Yoni is a term that refers to the womb or the womb space of vagina in the Sanskrit language. Yoni or vaginal steaming is a centuries old practice in different parts of the world, including Africa or Asia. It's become popular in Western culture in the last few years, especially with certain celebrities giving it a notorious popularity. But what is it exactly? It involves the process of exposing the vulva and the vagina to steamed herbal infusions by sitting or hovering over a pot or container of steaming herbs. Does it have any medical benefit? Well, those who recommend it say it cleanses the vagina, can balance female hormones and improve sexual functioning amongst other claims. However, there is no medical evidence to support this. After it gained popularity in recent years, medical practitioners have been very vocal about their concerns over this process that provides no benefit and could risk serious illness. So speaking of risk, what are the risks of vaginal steaming? The obvious one is burns to the skin from the steam, potential irritation of vaginal tissues or vulval tissues by the herbs, Commonly, they use things like basil, rosemary, and others. The heat could cause increased blood flow to the vulva, congestion, and itching in that area, and further risk vaginal infections like yeast or thrush or BV, that is bacterial vaginosis. So vaginal steaming is a no. So now let's look at number two, another popular treatment or process known as vaginal douching. Douching is introducing liquids into the vagina for cleansing purposes. Douches include soaps or similar liquids which promise to rinse out the vagina and help a woman to feel clean inside. So does douching have any medical benefits? Now, it might make sense, I understand, to wash something clean, particularly after periods or after sex. However, this wash fails to provide any medical benefits. And while you may feel fresh or even smell fresh initially, continuous use can lead to some problems. So let's take a look at the risks. Vaginal douching is generally not recommended by healthcare professionals. And here's why. The vagina cleans itself. Body odor or smells around the genital area follow from sweaty skin around the vulva on clean underwear or failure to wash the vulva itself, not the vagina. The vagina cleans itself by emptying itself of blood and semen. Then it has cells that produce oils and materials that clean it out. The vagina also contains good bacteria whose presence helps to maintain the 
vaginal acidity level or pH which is crucial to reducing the risk of infections within the vagina or the genital tract. So instead of supporting all these natural properties of the vagina, these vaginal douches actually wash out the natural oils and the friendly germs that your body needs to get this job done. All that can lead to vaginal irritation, dryness, and increased risk of infections and more problems. So it's another no for vaginal douching. Next are vaginal eggs, also known as yoni eggs. We've already talked about the meaning of the word yoni, but these are egg-shaped objects made from gemstones that are supposed to be placed inside the vagina for healing properties. The practice is to insert an egg or stone into the vagina and leave it to remain for a few minutes, hours, or even overnight if you wish. For the best results, you're supposed to do this every day. The way they work is that these stones are supposed to possess unique energetic healing properties, which they transmit to the vagina. In addition to these spiritual benefits, they're also thought to have some physical properties. For example, have you heard of Kegel exercises? These are exercises that women do to strengthen a weak pelvic floor. Imagine sitting on the toilet right now to ease yourself. If I said stop and ask you to hold your wee, what would you do? Yeah, you'd make a squeezing action to hold your urine momentarily. That is really the Kegel exercises. You're squeezing those muscles of the pelvic floor. You can do them in sets during the day to help to strengthen your pelvic floor. So those who use or recommend the yoni eggs think they're encouraging the pelvic floor involuntarily and that wearing them will help to strengthen the pelvic floor. And so their supposed benefits include improved sexual function from improved libido to orgasm, relieving menstrual cramps and strengthening the vaginal muscle, balancing the menstrual cycle. And the common gemstones that are used for yoni eggs include jade, quartz and obsidian. But does it have any medical benefits. Some claim benefits from using the gemstone eggs in the vagina for supposed healing property, but there is no evidence that these yoni eggs or stones can deliver on those claims. They don't have any effect on hormone balance, sex drive, or vaginal muscles. And what are the risks? Well, besides the significant impact that buying these gemstones can have on your purse, getting them can also cause some injury to the pelvic floor. Because instead of strengthening the pelvic floor muscles, trying to hold the egg in place within the vagina constantly keeps the muscles permanently contracted or tense, which is not what you need. And so pelvic floor stiffness or tension can develop from using these yoni eggs. They can lead to pelvic pain, painful sex, and even straining at your bowel motions. These eggs or stones could even be a focus for infection, especially if they're not being cleaned properly between use. Germs could hide within them even after you've washed them, leading to infection. They may also have tiny cracks or rough areas on them, which can scratch the sensitive skin of your vagina, again, leading to infection. And of course, they could interfere with the vaginal pH and the natural cleaning ability of the vagina. So again, it's another no for the yoni vaginal eggs. So next up are the so-called vaginal tightening gels and laser treatment. These are supposed to help tighten the vagina, making it more sensitive sexually. They're aimed at women who've just had a baby or who are perimenopausal or even menopausal. So first, the tightening gels, how do they work? These are made with natural ingredients that have a supposed tightening effect or astringent effect on tissues. Women are supposed to use an applicator to insert the gel inside the vaginal canal. What many don't know though, is that instead of tightening, they end up drying out the vaginal tissue, reducing lubrication in the vagina. And while initially this will lead to more friction and stimulation during sex, it's not because of tightness. And if this continues, the friction soon leads to painful sex and can cause painful tears. The gels may also make the vaginal tissue swell a little bit, giving you a 
temporary feeling of tightness within the vagina. And what about vaginal tightening lasers? These are devices which are supposed to tighten the vagina by stimulate the production of collagen using painless laser therapy applied within the vagina. It's supposed to be used for 10 minutes, twice or thrice a week. Does it have any medical benefits? Whether gels or lasers, there is no medical evidence of any long lasting benefits for the purposes that you're using these treatments. And what about risks? Well, there are some. Potentially, you could be sensitive to the ingredients within the gels because even if they're supposedly natural, they may irritate your skin or even interfere with any other medicine that you're taking. Next, cleanliness and hygiene may be an issue with the laser, which could harbor germs in between use. If you have concerns about your vaginal tone or tightness, please speak to your doctor because we have more effective and proven treatments that you can get for that condition. Next, herbal inserts or suppositories. These are also known as vagina or, you guessed it, yoni pearls. Their specialty is that these are balls or pearls which contain herbs that are inserted within the vagina for various benefits, primarily for detoxification. Common herbs that are used in these yoni pearls are angelica root, peach kernel, rhubarb and others. So according to those who recommend these yoni pearls, you, in, you insert them within the vaginal canal for variable treatment periods. It could be for 24 hours or a couple of days, up to three days. It's so disgusting. And they're supposed to pull or draw out toxins, bad germs, dead cells, mucus, blood clots, and so on from the vagina. They're also supposed to help to tighten and tone the vagina. Does this process have any medical benefits? Well, although they are marketed as cleansing, we have no research to support any medical benefits of using these yoni pearls or that putting herbs inside your vagina has any vaginal or even womb benefits. And I think it's really important to say that it seems that these proponents are trading off women's insecurities about our vaginal health to sell these items which have no proven benefits. But let's talk about the risks because there are plenty as you can imagine if you're leaving something in your vagina for one, two or three days. It could cause vaginal irritation and lead to an abnormal vaginal discharge because of the effect of the herbs on the vaginal tissue. They of course would also interfere with the natural flora or the germs that exist within the vagina to maintain its acidity which increases the risk of infections. So a common side effect is developing a gray or white discharge which suggests at the very least some abnormal irritation of the vagina. Itching, burning sensation, dryness are also side effects of using these vaginal yoni pearls. A big no. So next, and these are conventional, they are vaginal deodorants. They are products that claim to mask or alter the natural vaginal odor but they can disrupt its pH balance and cause irritation. Again, these are the kind of products that also prey on our natural sensitivities or worry that our vagina doesn't smell right and then they try to sell us something that we're aspiring to. They come as powders, sprays or mists and some are marketed for internal application within the vagina. Most of them are recommended for effective external use in your intimate area, so that is outside the vagina. Essentially though, they're deodorants made with different ingredient mixtures that should be mild and are specially formulated for sensitive skin areas. Are there any medical benefits? Keeping the vagina and vulval area clean and smelling fresh is a simple function of regularly washing the area around the vulva and labial tissue and clitoris with mild soap and warm water without inserting anything into the vagina. Wearing cotton underwear or panties 
Wearing loose clothing also helps to keep your vaginal or genital area clean and fresh. The vulval skin is sensitive and normal deodorants may be harsh to the area. And this is where feminine sprays that are free from alcohol and other skin irritants may provide some benefits for external use only. But are there any risks? The feminine sprays may seem gentle and add a layer of cleanliness to the genital area. Areas. However, please be careful of using talc products near the vulval area of vagina as there may be slightly higher chance of ovarian cancer if the powder travels through the vagina into the ovaries. Next, vaginal UV light. Some devices claim to use UV light for hygiene purposes but limited evidence supports their safety or effectiveness. Do they have any medical benefits? So I haven't seen any tests to indicate that these devices have any benefits for health and they're more straightforward ways and effective ways to achieve good Volvo and vaginal hygiene than using these lasers. What about the risk? Well, UV or ultraviolet light burns are a serious risk. So this option shouldn't be used at all. And next we have LED vaginal therapy, which is ultraviolet free light so these are blue and red light therapy devices that claim to have numerous benefits for various vaginal conditions and can be used at home such as for treating vaginal dryness tightening and cleaning they also claim to treat conditions like cervical erosion vaginitis and even pid pelvic inflammatory disease how are they used the light is introduced via a probe inserted into the vagina for a variable period. So, I know you're asking, does it have any medical benefits? The manufacturers make a lot of bold claims, but there is no evidence that shows that they, they do anything or that they provide any benefits. And what about risks? There could be skin burns if they are used for a prolonged period of time or vaginal irritation if the device is set at the wrong light levels. In addition, these conditions that they're talking about, the erosion, vaginitis, PID, they need to be treated under the supervision of a medical practitioner. And there's a chance that somebody with PID who urgently needs antibiotics is sitting at home with a UV free light device. That's frightening. So this is a big no to this method. Number nine, vaginal lightning creams, bleaching, laser or chemical peels. Hmm. So these are products and their creams, lasers or peel treatments claiming to lighten the skin of the vulva, the vulva. Thankfully, I don't see anywhere where they say they apply them within the vaginal canal, but even over the sensitive vulva, they can have harmful effects on the skin and cause irritation. So it's really important to remember that the vulva can look different from one woman to another. We have large labia and small labia. Many of us have different colors or skin tones, even in our, in our own labia compared to our skin tone. Dark colored vulva skin may develop because of hormone changes in pregnancy or menopause, so natural reasons. But they could also happen from um, frequent bikini waxing, skin conditions like eczema or lichen sclerosis, which is very itchy, or even more serious conditions like vulva cancer. So it's important to talk to your doctor if you notice color changes instead of heading for a bleaching treatment or peel. So does it have any medical benefits? Fortunately, domestic bleach is not involved in these creams or lasers and they do not provide any health benefits except the feeling of you know, aesthetic pleasure, the appearance, which well, may boost an individual's mental health but there are better ways to achieve this. Essentially, they are cosmetic genital procedures and the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecologists argue that they are not medically indicated. I agree with that. What do you think? 
<laughs> I'd love to hear from you. But what are the risks? The degree of harm can depend on bleaching method. You know, we're talking about creams and pills and lasers. But supervised salon procedures are probably safer than trying to do it by yourself at home because hopefully if something goes wrong, they can get help. But remember that they could irritate the vulva tissues, causing swelling, burning, inflammation, and of course, potentially increase the risk of infections. Long-term laser treatments or peels could also lead to loss of sensation because they could damage the nerves in that area, or they could even stimulate and you have excess sensation as well. So they could go either way and there could be scarring from burns to the vulva area. It could also lead to scarring of the clitoral hood leading to fusion with the clitoris and in turn that can be complicated by painful sex number 10 is the yoni massage so this is an intimate massage technique that's thought to promote healing it's a sensual massage that helps people get comfortable with their bodies and it involves gently touching and pulling on various vulva tissues and it can be performed by yourself or with a partner or by a massage practitioner. Does it have any medical benefits? It has no known medical benefits. <laughs> it could make you feel better, can stimulate you, but medically, no. <laughs> but what are the risks? It's generally safe as long as it is performed in a hygienic way and without introducing any object into the vagina. If massage oils are used, um, being careful to avoid those that might irritate the skin of the vulva. Next, we're talking about crystal wands. So some claim that using crystal wands can enhance energy flow into the vagina. So you have these pelvic floor wands, which are also known as vaginal wands, and they're commonly made from um, silicone material. They have a good use for helping to stretch the vaginal opening, relieve pelvic floor tension, or even help with vaginal dryness. Then you have the crystal wands that are made from crystal and are believed to possess energy that can help vaginal health. Now, similar to the yoni eggs that we talked about earlier, the belief is that these wands can transmit energy into the vagina to promote healing. So do these crystal wands have any medical benefits? They also don't have any effect on hormone balance, sex drive, or vaginal muscles like we saw with the yoni eggs. Risk-wise, those made of crystal could present a risk if the crystal material from the wand irritates or inflames the vaginal tissue. They may also act as, you know, tools where harmful germs can multiply. So in between use, if it's not washed properly or stuck properly, increasing the risk of infection. Next, this is number 12. You're going to love this one and it's vaginal seaweed wraps. These are thought to provide various health benefits through seaweed application. Now, they are strictly a type of cosmetic gynecological procedure that involves applying a seaweed-based solution to the vaginal area. If you've tried this, please, I need you to share with me in the comments section how it went, what it was like, and so on. But the purpose of this is, among other benefits, it can activate circulation, help to relieve aches and pain. So it's applied over the skin and is expected to infuse minerals and vitamins from the seaweed into the body. So let us examine, does it have any medical benefits? Well, for my research, there are no medical benefits to this procedure. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you're tempted, you should probably spend your cash <laughs> on something more effective, maybe a pair of trainers or something else, because <laughs> there's no medical benefit to this. But like I said, if you've used it before and feel different, let me know. But what about the risks? Well, that can include things like skin irritation, if you're sensitive up to the seaweed material, um, and the material could actually seep into the vagina because even though you're, you're putting it on the vulva, it can seep into the vagina causing irritation, could lead to problems like bacterial vaginosis. Next, we have aromatherapy for the vagina. So this is using scented oils or herbs for supposed therapeutic effects for vaginal dryness. And it's not a weird um, or unconventional treatment. Many people use it, but I've included it here because it's quite popular and, you know, we need to talk about its safety and effectiveness. So those who are enthusiastic about these aromatherapy say that there are benefits from using it around the tissues of the vulva and in the vagina as a lubricant. And so there are different options 
extractions like lavender, chamomile, and jojoba oils. And they say these and other types of aromatherapy have been used for years as natural essential oils with gentle and healing properties. Hmm. Well, it's important that if you have vaginal dryness, you seek medical advice to understand the cause because there are so many. Please go and check out my um, video here talking about the causes of vaginal dryness and the treatments as well because common causes are things like your soaps, drugs like the pill, hormone imbalance and so on. Therefore, the treatments can be different, especially if you have moderate to severe vaginal dryness. There are vaginal lubricants which can help, but not all of them are vagina friendly and you should be very wary of what oil or anything that you're putting in or around the coochie. So are there any medical benefits to using aromatherapy oils? For people who have very mild dryness, there may be some benefit from using some of the aromatherapy oils um, around the vulva area and used with care. And what about the risks? Well, I've talked about some of them. Simply being natural doesn't mean that they couldn't cause any problem. They could cause irritation. And if you don't dilute the oil properly, or if you don't just use it carefully, it can affect the vagina pH again. Again, and that is even if you're just using it as a massage around the vulva and not putting it into the vagina it could seep into the vaginal canal so please remember that even though they're natural essential oils can contain chemicals which could interact with some of your prescribed medication like blood thinners or anti-inflammatory painkillers now let's talk about a very interesting it's not specifically a vaginal treatment but i thought it was really interesting and it's called vaginal seeding Please let me know if you've heard about vaginal seeding in the comment section. It's one that quite a few people consider a bit dodgy, but there are some that are interested and think that there may be something to it. It is not common practice, but what it means is that vaginal fluid from the mom is transferred to her baby after being born via a CS for potential anti-infection benefits. So essentially what happens is, before a woman has her baby, Vasius, a doctor places gauze swabs or you know dressings inside her vagina. After the baby is born, they take out the swabs, which at this point will be soaked with some vaginal fluid. And they use these swabs to cover the face of the baby, its eyes and its mouth. This is supposed to provide those children born via CS with the germs that they apparently missed out on because they were not born vaginally. Does this procedure have any medical benefits? There is a suggestion that children born via CS, for example, moi, may miss out on a stronger immune system or be more likely to develop certain disease conditions. And this is why some suggest vaginal seeding to prevent this weak immune system and exposing babies to germs to help their immune system. But there is no strong evidence that this actually works. But what are the risks? Authorities in both the UK and the US do not support this procedure. Doing this could very easily pass severe or even life-threatening infections to the baby like group B streptococcus infection, herpes, chlamydia, or other sexually transmitted infections. Let me know what you guys think. <laughs> so it's important to note that many of these popular or not so popular practices lack any scientific basis evidence and they could pose potential risks always always ask a healthcare professional we're here <laughs> so next check out my playlist here on vaginal health and conditions give this video a like and i will see you again soon bye bye